so basically we had discussed about uh, way preparation of solution containing non volatile non volatile solute right yeah okay wait a minute we also discussed about the graph right the graph which graph uh, the uh, uh, let me just check it yeah this graph yeah yeah we did that one okay now i'm going to give you a question that is on rolls law just solve it okay so this is a question in which you have two substances x and y when you are taking two moles of x and three moles of y you get a total pressure of 500 mm hg okay. now when you are going to take three moles of x and two moles of y then you have total pressure of 400 mm hg now you need to calculate p not x that means pure vapor pressure of x and p not y that means pure vapor pressure of y okay okay please do it let me know when you are done with this yeah one minute okay.
Yeah, okay. Uh, P naught X is equal to 200 and uh, P naught Y is equal to 700. Very good. <clears throat> so now we are going to talk about types of solution and there is basically two types of solution. Okay. You can see this, there are two types of solution. The one is ideal solution and the another is non-ideal solution. This is ideal solution. And the another type is non-ideal solution. So how we are gonna decide whether a solution is ideal and whether a solution is non-ideal. So there are four criteria that determines whether a solution is ideal and non-ideal. So the first criteria is Rolle's law. Rolle's law. So see what is uh, basically what, um, how we are gonna uh, see whether Rolle's law is the criteria of ideality and non-ideality. So if a solution follows ideal solution, that is, uh, if a solution follows Rolle's law, that is ideal solution. So first of all, I'm going to write the criteria and then we will see delta V mix, that is change in volume. Then we will see delta H mix, that is change in enthalpy. Then we will see delta G and delta S. And the fifth condition is basically interaction. Oh. basically interacts. So uh, I'm going to talk about first ideal solution. So basically what is ideal solution? So any solution which follows Rolle's law, which follows Rolle's law. Okay. That is basically ideal solution. That means total pressure is equal to PA plus PB. That means basically it total pressure observed is equal to calculated or experimented. So if you are going to see uh, observed total pressure is equal to calculated total pressure, or you can say that experimental total pressure is equal to theoretical total pressure. If they are equal, that means it is following Rolle's law and it can be ideal solution. Okay. Now the second is delta V mix should be, must be zero. Change in volume will be equal to zero. And then we are going to talk about delta H mix that is enthalpy that is also equals to zero <clears throat> for oh. ideal solution. Now the fourth condition was delta G and delta G basically we use it for a spontaneity, a spontaneity and non-spontaneity. And whenever, uh, whether it is an ideal or non-ideal solution, delta G will be lesser than zero. If you are going to make a solution, you just need to dissolve two things, uh, like a solute will be dissolved in a solvent and it will make a solution on its own. We, you won't be in need of an external agent like temperature and pressure. So for ideal solution and non-ideal solution, delta G will be lesser than zero and delta S will be greater than zero. Do you know what is this S? Delta S is basically change in entropy and entropy depends on number of moles. So initially in one container, you have lesser number of moles and in another container, lesser number of moles. And when you are going to mix in a bigger container, there will be more number of moles. That's why entropy greater than zero. That are, And this entropy is for ideal and non-ideal solution, both. Is okay. that? Yeah. Now the fourth is very important. Fifth is the very important that we were talking about interacts. So this interaction, as you know that in a container, you have pure A, AA molecule. So there will be interaction between AA and you have another container B in which you have, uh, there will be interaction between BB. This must be equal to the interaction of AB. That means you are going to dissolve A into B. So basically there will be interaction between A molecules and B molecules and they should be equal. That is interaction for ideality of a solution. Okay. <clears throat> is that clear? Yeah, clear. Yeah. Now, if you are going to talk about non-ideal solution, non-ideal solution. So it's very easy. You can see non-ideal solution is basically which does not follow, does not follow Rolle's law does not follow Rolle's law. That means basically total pressure observed will not be equal to PA plus PB. 
observed will not be equal to calculate. Now the second is basically delta V mix. So delta V mix is also not equal to zero. Now the third is basically delta H mix. This will also not equal to zero. Now the fourth, I already told you in both cases, delta G will be same and delta S will also be same. And the fifth is, you can see AA interaction and BB interaction will not be equal to AB interaction. This is the condition for non-ideality of solution. Okay. Yeah. There are two types of, if it is not equals to this, then what is the value? What is the relative relationship between them? So basically, if uh, this ideal solution is divided into two parts, this ideal solution mm -hmm. is divided This ideal solution is divided into two parts that is showing positive deviation and showing, showing negative deviation. <clears throat> is that clear? Okay, yeah. So see what is I, uh, positive deviation and uh, negative deviation. It's very easy. If Absorbed pressure greater than calculated pressure. That means basically positive deviation. Delta V mix, if greater than zero, if it is not equals to zero and then greater than zero, positive deviation. Delta H mix greater than zero, then it's <coughs> positive deviation. And delta G, that is constant, less than zero, delta S greater than zero. And the fifth is interaction. That means basically, if AA interaction and BB interaction is greater than AB interaction, then it is positive deviation. <clears throat> is that clear? Uh, wait, that PT should be greater than PA plus PB, right? Yeah, yeah. PT greater than PA plus PB. PB, okay. okay. Great. Yeah, yeah. That is, yeah. Now, see, yeah, yeah. showing negative deviation. Negative deviation will be just opposite of the positive deviation, lesser than PA plus PB. And then delta V mix lesser than zero. Oh, and then delta uh, delta H mix lesser than zero. Oh. And then the interaction is basically AA and BB. You know what happened here will be lesser than AB. If you are going to mix HNO3, that is nitric acid in water, there will be formation of hydrogen bond that will give extra stability to, to that solution. So Interaction will be higher. Okay. Are you getting my point? Yeah. yeah, yeah. A B greater than zero. And then, you know, delta G lesser than zero, delta S greater than zero, right? Yeah. yeah. So please do write it. Yeah, done. Very good. <clears throat> now, there will be graph. <clears throat> the graph one which we plotted is for ideal solids. So if we have this graph, you know, zeta A is equal to zero, zeta B equals to, uh, sorry, zeta A equals to one, zeta B equals to zero, zeta B equals to one, zeta A equals to zero. And you know yeah. that there will be P naught A, there will be yeah. P naught B, there will be P naught B. So you know that you are going to do this and this, and this is for ideality of solids. Now, if you want to plot a graph for positive deviation, the graph will be like this, like this, like this. Okay. this is for positive deviation. In the same way, if you are going to plot a graph for negative deviation, so <clears throat> I'm going to plot a graph for, for uh, ideal solution, then we will plot it with respect to that. It will be more clear. There will be P naught A, there will be P naught B. And you know that this will be like this, this will be like this. And for positive deviation, negative deviation, it will be like this. Yeah, okay. down. Okay. And this is the total pressure, so it will be like this. Yeah. <clears throat> Got it? Yes. Very good. Can I move to the next part? 
Uh, one minute, one minute. Okay. Yeah, done. If I'm going to give you a question that has been asked in NEET uh, and JMS also. So the question is, the mixture which shows positive deficit, the mixture which shows positive deficit from Rolls law. Yes. <laughs> Please do this question. Yeah, yeah. Um. Uh, is it a B option? Uh, is it B? Yes. No, the answer yeah. is basically A. So I'm oh, going okay. to give you a simple trick that uh, you can easily solve this type of question. So okay. you can see that I'm going to make a diagram like a structure. Just write with me. Okay.
Yeah, done. Wait a minute. Okay, okay. no problem. <laughs> So there is there is a simple trick that you can use to okay. uh, recognize whether it is a ideal and non-ideal solution, and in non-ideal solution, whether it is positively deviated and negatively deviated. So basically, how we are gonna recognize whether whether it is an ideal solution. So keep it in mind that if the substances are similar, like you can see, and butyl bromide. Butyl chloride that will always or generally so ideal solution. Like you okay. can see ethyl bromide, ethyl iodide, they are similar. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Halo, uh, you can say haloalkan alkyl halide. So it means yeah. ideal solution. Chlorobenzene, bromobenzene, ideal solution. N hexane, N octane, they are alkane, yeah. so it will show ideal solution. But when they are different, there will be non-ideal solution. Now, okay. how we are going to recognize whether it is a positively deviated or negatively deviated? So generally, there will be some exception. Generally, if alcohol is there, it will show <clears throat> positive deviation. If alcohol is there, it will show positive deviation. This is some exception that you need to keep it in mind. Okay. Okay. And generally, if acid is there, they will show negative deviation. They wow. will show negative deviation. Now, see, this is acid and alcohol, so keep it in mind. This is, you need to keep it in mind. Are you okay. getting my point? Yeah, yeah. So, this is the concept behind ideality and non-ideality and how, we're gonna, how you're going to recognize whether it is an ideal and non-ideal. So, in the previous question, you can see that uh, the mixture which shows positive deviation, that means alcohol must be there. So, it yeah. can. Are you getting my point? Yes, yes. Okay. So, can you tell me? Uh, about this benzene and toluene. Uh, what do you think? This is benzene. Yeah, and toluene is CH3. Sir. Yeah. What do you think? They are almost same. Okay, okay, yeah, they're almost same. So yeah, it'll be ideal, ideal solution. Yeah. Can you tell me about chloroethane and bromoethane? Yeah, this is also ideal because same. they are ideal both halogen. This is acetone and chloroform. That means CHCl3 and ch 3 co 3 So I told you to keep some exception in your mind that you can see CHCl3 and CH3 <clears throat> where it is. Uh, this is benzene. Yeah, yeah. Aniline. Okay, this is benzene. Wait a minute. Just let me match it. Yeah. Okay. So uh, what was that? Chloroform and acetone, I think. Acetone. So basically, it is ne negative deviation. Chloroform and just write it here. Okay. Chloroform and this is chloro. Negative deviation. So some of the exceptions you need to keep it in mind. That's yeah. it. Uh, the questions are very easy. Can we move to the next part? Sure, yeah. Okay. Moving to the next part, then we are going to start a new topic that is colligative properties. Colligative properties. So see, what is this? Uh, what is the colligative property? So basically, this colligative property depends upon number of solute particles only number of solute particles not the solvent and the nature it depends only on solute particles so i'm going to write a small definition of this 
those property of dilute solution or those properties of dilute solution which depend upon which depend upon number of solute particles number of solute particles and not on the nature of solute particles and not on the nature of solute particles so this type of property is known as colligative property and we have four types of colligative properties that the first one is basically a relative lowering in vapor pressure relative lowering in vapor pressure that we have already discussed now the next one is basically elevation in boiling point elevation in boiling point and the third one is depression in freezing point depression in freezing point and the last one is osmotic pressure the last one is osmotic let me know when you are done with this so that i can change the slide yeah done so this relative lowering in vapor pressure that we have already discussed that there was a formula zeta b is equal to p not a minus p a upon p not a yeah this p not a represents basically original pressure this is final pressure <laughs> and final pressure some in some books it it can be written as p not a minus p s and p not a this is also the pressure of solution because there was two container we had in this we had a that is solvent and this is basically volatile solvent this is basically volatile solvent and you can see this is b that is non volatile solvent uh, solute that you are going to keep this in a bigger container and there will be a b a b so here the pressure of a we are going to write it pa and you know that since b is non volatile it won't have any vapor pressure so we can write pt or ps can we write it because the pressure oh. created is only because of a so in some books it will be written as ps or pt <laughs> and you can see this pressure is depending upon only one quantity that is mole fraction of solvent yeah mole fraction of solvent so this is basically rlvp relative lowering in vapor pressure wait is it the solvent or solute uh... solute solute okay okay or uh, let me show you that we had done when uh, vapor pressure of a solution containing non volatile solute so non volatile solute we solute. Could be, right p okay p as no uh, and we got a formula you can see where it is you can see this is the formula we got right okay okay yeah yeah now i also told you this is a one of the colligative properties that we will discuss so now you are clear with this colligative property right yeah 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 now the next colligative property is depression in free, uh, boiling point uh, sorry elevation in boiling point you know what this is all the elevation in boiling point this is all the solution in which we have non volatile solute <laughs> so basically see this is our solvent you are going to add non volatile solute in this then you will get a solution in which volatile solvent and solute will be there now can you tell me can you uh, can you tell me vapor pressure will increase or decrease of this solution uh 
yeah vapor pressure will decrease or increase i think this decrease. is the same question that i had i had asked in the previous topic i didn't write the whole question this okay. is the question. you can see when a was pure there is vapor yeah. uh, vapor pressure that is p not a b has nothing that means vapor yeah. pressure equals to zero and this is the solution then there we denote pressure of a as p a so there was four option that i had given in the oh, okay so what was the answer p not a greater than p a yeah yes are you getting my point yeah, yeah. vapor decreases. pressure vapor pressure of pure solvent is greater so the vapor pressure here will decrease decrease yes or yes. no yes so you can see you are uh, you are going to relate it on in your uh, by you oh, wait a minute Okay, okay, where it is? Wait a minute, wait. Okay. Where I have written, it's all gone. Uh -huh. Where? Uh -huh. Sliding, sliding, and it's blank. Wait a minute. Okay. so what i was saying davis is that okay. <clears throat> so you can see the vapor pressure decreases in the solution yes. because here it was p not a and here it was pa so i had given the explanation why p not a greater than pa that means vapor pressure decreases yeah. so can you comment anything about the boiling point of solution will it increase or decrease it will increase the pressure is inversely proportional it will increase right yeah so that's why there is elevation in boiling point okay. the name is elevation in boiling point yeah. now i'm going to define what is this elevation in boiling point it's very easy boiling point you can see the temperature at which vapor pressure of solution becomes equal to atmospheric pressure what is vapor pressure atmospheric pressure so okay you have studied physics that if you are going to apply 10 newton in the left hand side and i am going to apply how much force should i apply to just move you on in your opposite direction so at least 10 newton 10 yeah just more than 10 newton and you will be yeah. <laughs> moving in your opposite direction so in the same way so since we are talking about vapor pressure so we, uh, this is the, the definition in terms of atmospheric pressure that is applying on yeah. the solution so it's very easy so uh, there is slightly disturbed because uh, there is marriage ceremony of my brother so oh okay yeah. so sorry for that no problem yeah. okay now you can see i'm going to plot a graph between vapor pressure and temperature that graph you have already seen i have already told you the graph will be like this yes or no yeah and i'm going to draw this graph for two like pure solvent and solution so basically when you are going to plot the graph you will see that at the same atmospheric pressure the boiling point 
will be different like this is for pure solvent and this is for solution right okay. as you can see boiling point increases so this yeah. boiling point is for t not t not not represents in this chapter not represents pure and this is the boiling point of the solution t so experimentally yeah. basically uh, if you are going to find delta tv that means change in the boiling point that will be equal to change uh, basically boiling point of solution minus boiling point of solution that will yeah. uh, give you the change in boiling point how much it elevated or increased yeah and, okay. uh, so i'm going to write tv is boiling point of solution <clears throat> and t not b is basically boiling point of solvent pure solvent you can write pure solvent now experimentally we found that delta tb is directly proportional to molality of the solution <clears throat> and to remove this proportionality sign there will be a constant that is kb into m and this kb is molal elevation constant molal elevation constant molal elevation constant and we can also call it uh, basically it is also called ebullioscopic constant ebullio okay constant so i want you to tell me the unit of this kb constant uh t by uh m inverse which is uh, like Uh, yeah, T mole inverse uh, kg. Uh, what you just said, T. E. Uh, sorry, uh, Kelvin mole inverse. Uh, okay. So you are going to find out the formula for kb. That will be delta T b upon yeah. m. And you know the formula of this. This will be k k uh, Kelvin, yeah. and this is k uh, Kelvin mole per inverse. per kg. KB, so yeah. will be Kelvin, <laughs> or you can write. Calvin kg per mole, right? Yeah. yeah. Yes. <clears throat> Or you can also write Calvin per molality, m per molality, right? Yeah. So please do write it. What is the name? Uh, the spelling of ebullioscopic is A U B I. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah you know, okay. ebulli e. It's e. Okay. okay. Ebullioscopic constant. I think it's the okay. I'm gonna give you a question on this. Please do it. Okay. Uh yeah. Oh uh, yeah. Done. is do solve it okay mean formula for glucose is uh, c6h12o6 Yeah. Okay. Yes.
So are you done with this? Uh, we are about to be. Uh, it's x like it's equal to like uh, three by fifty plus three seventy three. Uh, uh, what is the exact answer? Three seventy three point zero five two. No, no, three seventy three plus uh, three by fifty. Three by fifty is uh, twenty three. No, no, three by fifty. Fifty. I'm not getting it. Three by fifty. It is. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> ah, so it'll be three three seventy three point zero six. Yeah. Yeah, it's almost same. Yeah. Right? Okay, I'm gonna give you another question on this. Then we'll move to the depression of freezing point. Okay. Okay. Let me know when you are done with this. Yeah. And if you are unable to solve it, just let me know. Yeah. We are not getting. Not a problem. As basically in this 
question if you are going to directly apply you will not get anything like uh, what i want to say is that if yeah. you have seen this kb and in your mind if there is a formula like delta tv is equal to kb that is good kb into yeah. kb is given delta tv we will see about it because yeah. you can see uh, 100 degree centigrade of vapor pressure of a solution you can see the 100 degree centigrade that means t not b is given right yeah <clears throat> so delta tv as a formula tv minus t not b yeah <clears throat> okay and we need to calculate this part but when as you can see the boiling point of solution is to be calculated delta uh, tb we need to calculate kb is also given but here m that is number of moles of solute upon mass of solvent this is the formula for uh, for molality okay yeah <clears throat> yes molality so this is also given as 100 gram right solvent yeah. as a mass but if you are going to open this formula this will be given mass upon molar mass right yeah so given mass is also given 6.5 gram yes. but molar mass is not given so we need to do uh, we need to <clears throat> do it by another concept or another formula to calculate this molar mass we need to calculate molar mass first and put the value of molar mass here then we will get it then yeah. how we going to calculate molar mass it will be with the help of rlvp that is relative lowering in vapor pressure as i told you p0 minus ps upon p0 that will be equal to <clears throat> mole fraction of solute right yeah and mole fraction of solute uh, has a formula number of moles of solute upon number of moles of solute plus number of moles of solvent right yeah so you can see that uh, this number of moles of solute is very lesser as compared to the number of moles of solvent so we can neglect here and we can write number of moles of solute upon number of moles of solvent are you getting my point oh okay 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 now you can see a solution of uh, this this uh, is 732 mm <clears throat> now this you can uh, imagine that uh, this p not a this is the initial original pressure so what is yeah. the only original pressure 180 m initially yeah. it will and 180 m has a value 760 mm so i'm going to put here 760 mm and what is the uh, pressure of solution that is 732, 732. upon it will be 760 and it will be equal to this <clears throat> given mass upon molar mass of b that we need to calculate into molar mass of a upon given mass of a can we write can i write it yeah yeah yes so molar mass of a you can easily put a, uh, since what uh, what is the solvent what uh, this will be h218 and it has a mass of 100 g right yeah and this <clears throat> is a value 6.5 uh yes yes and you can calculate this part please do it okay do let me know if you have any other doubt in this then we will move to the next okay. it's a very good question yeah uh, should i tell the answer of uh, mb uh it will be uh what it will be wait a minute 31.75 approx okay okay how much you got uh i i i still doing <laughs> okay okay yeah done done and you are gonna put the value here and you can calculate this yes yes 
first you have to calculate delta tb with the help of this and then delta tb will be equal to tb, TB minus minus yeah. t not b and you can calculate this part because you have calculated and you have this so basically tb will be approximately 101 degree centigrade okay yes okay so i'm moving to the next and that is depression in freezing point in the next class we're gonna end this chapter and then we are gonna start this uh, chemical kinetics which is a very small chapter we can cover that in one and a half class or one okay class. so you can see this is basically depression in freezing point depression in freezing point as you can see vapor pressure decreases so freezing point basically also decreases so here i'm gonna write define this freezing point so freezing point is the temperature freezing point is the temperature <clears throat> at which vapor pressure of liquid state vapor pressure of liquid state becomes equal to the becomes equal to the vapor pressure of solid state so this is how we define vapor pressure then there will be a graph that we already know this is basically vapor pressure versus temperature graph and the graph is like this this is for the solution and this is for the solvent i'm going to write this this is for solvent pure solvent and this is for solution now you can see the vapor uh, the freezing point of solution is decreases tf and the freezing point of pure solvent is basically t not f so there is a formula t delta tf will be equal to t not f minus tf t not f minus tf and t not f is basically freezing point of solution freezing point of solution and tf is basically freezing point of solvent freezing point of Oh, wait a minute okay. yeah freezing point of wait a minute i just did it wrong okay. freezing point of pure solvent pure solvent and this is basically freezing point of solvent now experimentally it is also found that experimentally it is also found that delta tf directly proportional to directly proportional to molality and delta tf will be equal to will be equal to kf into m <clears throat> okay yeah kf into m and this kf is constant and we call it basically molal depression constant we call it molal depression constant the previous one was molal elevation constant and this is yeah. molal depression constant and we also call it cryoscopic constant we also call it cryoscopic constant okay <clears throat> okay. so please determine the unit of this and then we will be at it uh, of kf right yeah yeah kf okay. yeah it's same uh, kelvin kg per mole yeah. that's good it will be kelvin kg per mole <laughs> Can I move to the next part? Yeah, yeah, yes. Okay, I'm gonna give you a very easy question, and then I'll give you a standard question, then we will see it. Okay.
Uh, is it uh, 1.07? Is it 1.07? Yeah. What you have calculated, what it is? 1.07 liter? It is, uh, no, no, liter. It is gram. No, no, it's wrong. Wrong, yeah. Huh. Should I explain? Yeah, okay, yeah, yes. Okay, uh, yeah, it is basically easy than the previous question. As you know that uh, T naught F minus TF will be equal to basically KF into N, right? Yeah, yes. Now you can see T naught F and the value is given as uh, what amount of C2H5 volts? It freezing point is minus two degrees centigrade. So if I'm going to calculate delta TF, that is basically T naught F minus TF. So as you, as you can see that, oh, wait a minute. This is zero degree centigrade. Yeah. Yes or no? And this is minus two degree centigrade. So delta yeah. TF will have a value that is two degree centigrade, right? Yeah. So all okay at this point? Yes, this all point. okay. This is two. And what is the value of this is 1.86 into yeah. molality. That means basically a uh, number of moles of solute uh, that is given mass upon molar mass upon mass of solvent in kg, right? Yeah. And what is the mass given? We need to calculate what is the molar mass. Forty-six. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. I. Yeah. What do you have taken? Yeah, I only found number of moles. Like uh, okay. that's only. Thing. You have calculated the number of moles. That is okay. Okay, just do One. it. Okay, okay. So it will be basically m by forty-six, and what is the mass of solvent? That is one. So if you are going to solve it, the mass will be equal to forty-six. 49, 46. 46. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, around there. Can I change the slide? Yeah, yeah. I'm going to give you a question on uh, concentration. Term. It's a very good question. Okay. Okay. Please do this. Okay.
and not getting see uh, the number of moles of oxygen in air in 1 liter of air 1 liter that means 1000 ml yes in which 21% of oxygen is present right yeah so if you are going to do 21% of oxygen it will be 210 ml yeah yeah right now see if you got the volume of oxygen you can easily calculate the number of moles that is given volume upon molar volume have you seen this formula no oh, no see we have three formula for number of moles given mass upon molar mass yeah given volume upon molar volume that is 22.4 liter and number of moles is also equals to given number of particle upon avogadro number that is a value 6.0 ah, yeah. to the power 23 yes so this okay. is 210 ml now in the denominator you can see 22.4 liter so in order to make in same unit you are gonna multiply it by 1000 right yes yeah. then you will get the number of moles that will be approximately 0 0.09 moles okay. okay got it yes so it's very easy <clears throat> right yeah yeah so can we move to the next uh, one minute one minute uh, okay Yeah, okay, done. Now see, we have osmosis. Uh, before starting osmotic pressure, do you know what is osmosis? Yeah, yeah, it is the like movement of water from higher concentration to lower concentration. Yeah, yeah, you know that very good. Yeah. So there are, a con this is a container in, uh, in which this is divided into two parts through a membrane that is called semi-permeable membrane, right? Yeah. So can you tell me, if I'm telling you that there is a container one in which concentration of one first container C1 is greater than concentration of second container C2, mm -hmm. what does this mean? In this container, you have two parts, solute and solvent yeah. and another part this is also solute and solvent right yeah so can you tell me with respect um, uh, what does this means concentration of solution if con if i'm telling you uh concentration of solution that means basically solute particles here will be greater than solute particle here okay yeah you're getting my point if i'm say, yeah. uh, telling you this is your concentrated acid that means the quantity of acid is more yeah, yeah. so okay. whenever we are going to say concentration of solution that means we are talking about solute is that yeah. clear yes so just suppose this is c1 and this is c2 and let's say c1 greater than c2 and yeah. you know what does this semi permeable do with through semi-permeable membrane, only solvent can pass through because the size of solvent is lesser or smaller than solvent, uh, solute. Are you getting my point? Okay, okay, okay. So, can you imagine this C1 is greater than C2? That means solvent particle here will be lesser than solvent particle here. Yes, yes. So, the movement will be right to left, not left to right, right? Oh, yes. Okay, okay. Yeah. So we can define osmosis in two terms in terms of concentration of solution or in terms of the concentration of solvent. Are you getting yeah. my point? Yes. yes. So, in terms of concentration of solute, uh, solution, the movement will be lower concentration of solution to higher concentration of solution. Are you getting my point? Yeah. yeah. Solution that means solute. So, whenever yeah. the solute will be lesser, that means solvent is greater. So the movement will be like this. So I'm okay. going to define this.
प्लीज डू इट एंड लेट मी नो व्हेन यू आर डन विद दिस एंड रीड इट एट वंस या या ओके आई डू दैट Okay, I'm done. I'm ready. Right Very good. Now we are going to deal with this osmotic pressure. Osmotic pressure is represented or symbolized by pi. Osmotic pressure. Yes. Yeah. Now see, I'm going to make a diagram that will make it easy to understand. this is this is the diagram okay now there is piston there is piston and this is divided into this is your spm this is pure solvent pure solvent and this is the solution that means solute and solvent and here from p18 it's applying p18 are you getting my point uh, oh pressure yeah yeah sir so please just draw it and let me know when you are done with the drawing uh, yeah done <clears throat> very good now see what do you think where will be the movement since there is spm semi permeable membrane the okay. movement will be from right to left because since it is pure solvent that means concentration of solvent or the particles of solvent will be higher here as compared to here because yes. there is solute and solvent both yeah right so see what is osmotic pressure so there will be movement from right to left and to stop this movement just to stop this movement you are going to apply this uh, pressure with the help of piston here to stop this process osmosis to stop this process that pressure is known as os osmotic pressure are you getting my point okay okay easy and if you are going to apply more pressure then this osmosis uh, that we follow will be felt right the movement will be from left to right if you are going to oh, okay. pressurize it that is called reverse osmosis okay 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 so i'm going to define it just right here yeah
let me know when you are done with this. Uh, yeah, done. So you can see to just stop the process osmosis, you are going to apply a pressure to stop this uh, process. That pressure is called, extra pressure is called osmotic pressure, right? Yeah. So experimentally, we found that this osmotic pressure is directly proportional to molarity and this osmotic pressure directly proportional to temperature. I'm going to write this together directly proportional to mt and to remove this proportionality sign there will be a constant gas constant r mt and we can also write phi is equal to mrt okay yeah and r you know that in terms of joule there will be value 8.314 yes and r can be also written in terms of pressure 0 0.0821 yeah please do write it Yeah, done. I'm going to give you a question on this, then we will move. Okay. Please do this. Okay. Wait, sugar's uh, formula is. Uh... You know that C12 is 22O11. Ah, yes. Okay, yes. Yeah. Uh, is it 18.2? What is the answer? 18.223. Yeah, yeah, three point something, right? 